the time is 6 30 so i will call the work session of the mayor and council for the city of snellville georgia for monday november 8th 2021 to order first we'll go through the regular business meeting items we have the invocation by chaplain jackie turner is that right there'll be no uh, Jay is going to do the pledge. <laughs> there he is. Uh, then we'll have administering the oath of office to Christy, Gretchen, and Todd. Um, so each of you will go down in turn. Get sweared at. And then it's already we happened enough to me today. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we've got two proclamations for our officers. And then we have the approval of the minutes. And then the public hearing, we have one item here. Um, the Mulder property on Scenic Highway. Is there anything anyone wants to discuss or ask in the work session? Um, I've put together a proposed language for um, under conditions as they were proposed by the planning direct director, if if uh, we decide to move forward with this, I would ask that number eight, which currently reads, except for the two north road access drives shown on the submitted site plan, there should be a ten foot undisturbed buffer adjacent. Blah blah blah. Like you can read yourself. Um, I would like that change, or I propose that we change that to buffer shall be shown, shall be as shown on sheet R2 dated and submitted 10-26-2021 with the addition of an 8-foot opaque fence designed, designed and approved by director, or as approved by director of planning development or his designee to extend the length of frontage along North Road and extend down Stratford Drive to the end of the landscape buffer. And I will email that to you all if that's... Would you want to put Todd amendment of number no. <laughs> And then that would also um, warrant the striking of number nine because number nine has to do with filling in areas along a 10-foot undisturbed buffer that isn't currently with the... So how would you feel about adding one thing i don't like about fences a lot of times at these 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 developments is they after a while they're in a state of disrepair and falling apart sometimes what, what could we add that it must be kept in in a in a condition of good repair as determined by the planning director that would fall under the international building code right yeah, uh, you can certainly add it if you want, just the expectation is okay. Known, but yeah, I mean, we, we have the ability <coughs> so, to, 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 to govern that now, but I, I don't think it hurts. Fence design. It. It's just so everybody knows up front. Built you know. and maintained. And now, I, I, in talking to a couple council members, um, is there a preference on would you rather have the fence on the outside of the buffer or on the inside of the buffer? I think the inside. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's just go ahead and say that too, just so okay. there's no uh, there's no questions when it comes time to find our mm -hmm. Okay. And no. then maintain <coughs> sound and everything. And then nine would not apply. <coughs> Um, Jason, what is the requirement as far as the either the height or the caliber of trees that are planted in a buffer like that? Uh, typically, we encourage uh, six to eight foot trees. Let me see what they're calling for real quick. And there's a planning list. Yeah, it's six is the minimum. Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, a three foot caliper, I think it'd be eight. Three inch caliper, eight inch minimum height. They usually measure everything <coughs> by height, not caliper. So, we, because you want to call it, you can call it eight feet, a minimum of eight foot. Do we need to add that? In the, well, it's. It's I can't sell on this plan if yeah. it says six or eight. Um, we can just specify that it's a minimum of an area of eight, eight feet. Okay. Minimum height. You're going to add that to your condition. Okay. What? 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 <coughs> trees, trees a minimum of an minimum eight, eight feet. feet. Three inch caliper, eight feet. feet. It says it may not be two. Yeah, I think it's in yeah, our already in our UDO. Yeah, the UDO calls for six. Okay. If you wanted something a little bigger. Minimum height of you could go well, eight, eight, and that's a common size. But the plantings are all different varieties, so they are. Just say of uh, uh, evergreen spring trees along the buffer on North Road. Jason, I have a full size if you want to look at it. And it Can you I mean, pull the planning list and just it see? It varies from six to eight. I mean, they're, they're for the, well, they're six on called, the low side, eight on the high side. Yeah, I mean, you can call for all eight or six and eight will probably be okay, too. That's up to you guys. I, I'm happy with either one. Eight is a definite uh, quicker buffer because you're starting off with two feet. And you're adding that to number eight? Is that what you're doing? The tree? Okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, is that what if, you're talking it about? It depends on whether, I mean... Part of the yeah, yeah, that's the will of council. Yeah. <coughs> I say yes. And you can add it under 13. You don't, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm trying whatever. to keep my, my changes to a minimum to. Yeah, just throw it in eight. That's okay. Since that's where we deal with the buffer. Right. Okay. Sounds good. Mm. So then nine is stricken. Yeah. And then, is that all you have? Yeah. Um, I, I think I'm good. Okay. Pick up <clears throat> delivery fresh. Oh. Limited hours. That would be. Condition 15. We'll get back to that page. Creating condition 15. What hours are you going to Condition. What would be. Well, condition 15 already says. It says nothing. I'm creating it. There's not a 15, I don't think. <laughs> On my copy, either. Oh. Yeah, it says the development shall abide yeah. so actually, by the applicable standards oh, of the EDO. Oh, I must be looking at That's right. So we can change it number 13. Oh, but that's not in yours. Oh, Lucky number 13. Okay. Um, I'm looking at the ones in the packet. That's the newest version. This is not, not what was posted on public copy, but I, the I pulled it off the website changes. today. Okay. <coughs> okay. Yeah, right now as it's shown there's no there's no limit. So if you want to add it to the outside of the current what would be the hours that you would recommend? Well we should have that consistent with our could noise. Be consistent ordinance. with the others. Mm -hmm. right. with the noise the other what's yeah. what's our six thirty to I think it was six seven. Six. six. No, because this, depending on if you want to call this a budding or residential right. area. Right, yeah. It is a budding or residential area. Yeah, so a bit, whatever. Well, someone looked it up real quick. 639. I looked that up and I thought I wrote it down. You just need to add it with the noise ordinance. Oh. Consistent with the noise ordinance, just yeah. put it use that language. Yeah, just, oh, okay. just delivery consistent. shall be between the hours as delivery. specified. Yeah. Pick, by up the pick up delivery, pick up trash or removal, san sanitation, pick up. Um, I did have it written down. I, added it. I figured somebody would be more of an expert than I am. Um, one more thing on prohibitions. We have a prohibition against adult entertainment. What about 
smoke and bait shops. Whatever you want to do. Can we? Are you all amenable to? Yeah. Do no, no we have in the city still have? We do there's have a moratorium, but. There's, no, there's an ordinance regarding. It's not a moratorium. There's an ordinance against vape shops in yes. the city okay. of Smellville. So we do not need to mm -hmm. add. What about liquor stores? I'm thinking futuristic. Mm-hmm. Tattoo, well, I mean, we don't tattoo. even have that legislation written, right? And we don't allow it now, so I don't know mm -hmm. if you need to prohibit something you can't. Yeah, we have to. It we has to go allow. through the process anyhow, and and then we would decide where to go. So Jason would, so smoke and vape shops would not be allowed in there, correct? No, they're not allowed. What about tattoo? Tattoo. They partner. have to go through um, the special uh, use process. Okay. How about? Um, CBD. Uh, I don't think we treat those as vape. We consider those as medical. Um, so they usually pop up. I mean, Snell's Pharmacy. They don't typically yeah. just have a CBD type that's, store that unless tough. they've got some vape, vape and other stuff. So because grocery stores sell that stuff. So yeah, and, and it's not like it's food. becoming more and more regulated too. So mm -hmm. there'll be a point where you know they're still trying to get outside the you know, the ingredients and stuff, but they're closing that loophole pretty fast. Okay. So the day probably will be soon for cannabis dispensary, too? Oh, well, I mean, that's Georgia. So that's state law first. Yeah, I know. Unfortunately, but, yeah. Again, just trying to think ahead a little bit. But all the uses will be governed by the use chart. In the okay, video. great. So that's anything that special use it still requires within the BG district you know, to require special use permit. And I don't think initially we were dealing with any of that. We may on the second wave of okay. tenants, but you know, we'll, we'll go by the rules that we have on that. Um, one thing I'd like to bring up for consideration when whoever, if, if it goes to motions and, and who's making motions, um, for the the planned pocket park, it talks about two things. First, the welcome to Snellville sign. Um, but to me, it's not clear from the conditions that were recommended. It, it's clear to me who would build it. It's not clear to me who would maintain it long term. So I think that needs to be specified and clarified in the conditions. The second thing is the park itself. It's listed that um, the developer shall grant a permanent access and maintenance easement. Well, that's the sign. I didn't see anything for the park. I think it's five, isn't it? Number five. Well, I've got this one that I pulled off today. From yeah, look on the last one on number five. It says developer shall grant no cost to city of Snell a permanent public access easement for the real property and located north of lot one. Uh, prior to the release, the developer shall be responsible for implementing and completing the proposed improvements as exhibited <coughs> on pocket park and several plan attached and as exhibit B. Okay, so, but there's, it doesn't really specify who's going to maintain it long term. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, at, at this point, if it's not our property and all we're getting is an access easement, it would be up to the, the developer. Uh, the developer. Okay. At this point, as a, the way it's written now. Okay. And then there was one other condition that just, it had a stray sentence in there that didn't make sense to me. I'm condition number six, and I think it is in the, ordinance that was drafted as well. It says, the developer shall construct at no cost to the city of Snowville the welcome to Snowville gateway sign located to the north of lot one and identified as a prop proposed, proposed park. park on the zoning site plan and is shown in the pocket park conceptual plan attached here to as exhibit B. That, next sentence, that right. next sentence, prior to sign construction, the final sign design. Yeah, that's probably a relic of something. So, and that's in the, but that's in the draft as well, so we just need to make sure that that. So does it need to say the final sign is on? Should we just need to uh, the, strike that sentence? Just strike, strike the, sentence. the sentence. Yeah, it looks like it was a carryover from some document, it looks like, but it's not in 
the other one. It doesn't have that. Oh, okay. It says prior to sign yeah. construction, the final sign design shall be approved by mayor and council. Do you want to just add that? Yeah, we could just okay. add that. So just carry that over shall be approved by mayor and council. It looks like just a few sentences or a few words were deleted. Yeah. Okay. But approved by mayor and or her designee. No, I think the council oh. should be able to look at it and weigh in. Yeah, we can do it like we did last time in the work session. Okay. It. Like we did at the Tommy's car wash. Have to come back for no, it wouldn't have to come for a vote, but just that everybody could see it and one at time and uh, <clears throat> make suggestions. Anyone else? Dave, anything? I would like, I, mean, I don't think we need to do this. I just like to see some kind of encouragement that a couple of really large trees be put in, and maybe some six inch calipers, and maybe give Jason the option to approve or disapprove. I don't think it needs to be a big deal, but maybe space out a couple of three inches, take out two, three inches, put in a six incher. Because I think that would make things really. You had a couple of twenty-foot trees in there. Make it work. You mean on the interior? Because definitely yeah. not in the buffer. No, place. but somewhere in the interior. No, yeah. and like one of those. And we've got some language within the UDO that gives them actually credit credits for that. Okay. <clears throat> better trees, and uh, I think the long-term impact of those are better trees if we're not trimming. The new ordinance addresses that specifically. So. Okay. We'll talk to the designer and go through and see where we can yeah. make some changes. I mean, you put in a 20-25 foot tree, it looks like it's been there for... Yeah, even these ones just on the green, it yeah. came in just a little bigger, they've responded. You know, and right. They grow, uh, they've already gone through that little initial three-year growth spurt. And they, yeah. They, they come up pretty quick. It makes a better impact. Right? Okay. And I just want to be clear on the condition number 14 I think about signage that prohibits any kind of signage on North Road correct Correct. and then the, what we did there instead of having the developer the applicant design a master plan on the get-go um, because there's different linear road frontages on each parcel that would uh, basically uh, amend itself to having like a huge sign a whole sign that they submit a master sign plan where all the signs are going to be uh, the same except for the sign. I think it's on lot two are, um, that's going to share um, the office building sign and it would have an extra panel for that one, but the rest would be all the same size and would be uh, built the same with the same material, uh, very similar to park place. And it wouldn't be at the maximum number, it would be something in the middle. Well, we weren't sure what that number was yet, so we want to make sure they're not just, they don't look like the cook out in front of them. One thing I was concerned about, and I think we had a, um, an, an email from, a, from, from a nearby resident about this, this Stratford, I mean right there, with these, you know, access here, you're only going to be able to stack up a couple of cars right here, and I think it, it's going to make it very hard to get from here to here into this road. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think specifically um, just with what you're seeing now with the one drive and the what is it, what that is, I think that's going to be the L-Hall. You're going to have a lot of traffic uh, coming through the front of 
two, three, and four that are going to be, if they want to turn left on scenic. That's what I'm concerned about. There's going to be a little stacking, and I, and I think a lot of that can be alleviated by having that rear access drive. A lot of people will find their way out there and then hope they make a right on the north and come down and catch that other light. That's the only thing. Um, but I think because of the speed limit, DOT would only give uh, one right in, right out, right there, and then the light. So we could try to maybe work through maybe some access behind. Uh, just have to figure it out because then you're cutting into the buffer. So mm -hmm. and we can look at it a little closer uh, during site development to see if we can get a little better flow in there. I just know sometimes the traffic that stacks up getting out of these some of these shopping centers, it's very difficult to get out onto 124 sometimes. That stack up on the interior streets of the buildings. Okay, anybody else? Slange? Got anything? Okay. okay. <coughs> Um, and then we have this one item under new business for ratifying the results of the election. Now we'll go over to the work session agenda. Any correspondence? No, ma'am. Any city attorney's report? Just briefly, I think everyone, most everybody responded. I sent an email with um, the proposed grass cutting for the some of Chase properties. Um, I don't know that I've gotten any reports back on if they've done anything yet or not. So we have our the court date will be coming up. Um, and just I need you to let me know if you all are not satisfied, or your constituents are not satisfied. Um, they seem very willing to, uh, you know, to try to accomplish. But right now, so they're going to be doing that perimeter cut. So on the and that's a 50 foot wide cut, correct? Mm -hmm. That's what we had, we had discussed. And when's the next court date? <coughs> uh, December the, I think the 18th, I believe. It's like Thursday. Yeah, I think it's around the 18th. So, um, that's really all, all new and exciting that's, that's going on right now. Oh, and then we do have. Um, Jason is getting ready before he leaves. Is going to uh, sign off on the nuisance abatement action on 3190 Grand Central. So we'll get them served, and it'll be. Um, I've actually set the court date for it for December 1st. I'm not going to wait until our QOL court. That's the first because there's no court the week of um, Thanksgiving, and we have to give them 14 full days. So the first available is December 1st. So we'll. Have that in short order. Have people addressing it. So <clears throat> that's it. Okay. Uh, ongoing projects. Mr. The um, town center, like I said on there, good weather equals good progress. Uh, we haven't exactly been able to cut into our six-week uh, deficit from the from the rock, but uh, we are staying on schedule from from that point. Uh, we've been October usually is dry, uh, but uh, we're we're a little bit ahead of uh, where we were proposed to be given uh, projected weather. Uh, roadway traffic flow will be changing on Oak and North. We have uh, it, it, as you watch the deck being constructed, the crane is moving towards north. So the last couple weeks it'll have to be set up in north. So local traffic will not even be allowed there. Uh, we're working on the exact schedule. We also spoke with folks from Fortune Johnson, and uh, they are going to have to use part of the roadway for for their development along north. So uh, um, I'll, north I'll, or Oak? Because we talked about Oak. On the, Oak will be Oak will never be closed. There will always be two 12 foot traffic traffic lanes right. on Oak, but we're going to take the parking area. There'll be a fence. There'll be cones. It'll be as safe as it can be, but uh, uh, there will be it'll it'll be a, a little change there also. Uh, I don't have the the map and the comments from Fortune Johnson yet. I'll get those out when we get them. But uh, there's going to be a little change there. Uh, <clears throat> we have uh, a couple of important dates coming up. 
the bid opening for the roadway work is on the 19th. Um, that's a few days before the meeting on the 22nd. I know it's a Thanksgiving week. You may not have a meeting then. Uh, we may not be able to, you know, to make a recommendation by then, but uh, we may need, a, may need a call meeting at some point in time if we don't meet on, on that date. Uh, also, uh, if you remember, we've talked about, uh, we had the great groundbreaking over there on, on Clower before, or shortly there, after, shortly uh, after the project truly started. But uh, we'd also like to have a topping out ceremony at the deck. Uh, and we're looking and talking to Winter and everybody, we're looking at December the 2nd at 11 a.m. Um, they recommended, uh, that's when they believe all of the concrete will be in place. And there are several people that we did not recognize at the, uh, at the, other, uh, at the other opening. This will not be overly fancy, but it'll be a chance to get the media there and and have some good publicity about you know a, a, a significant milestone in the in the in the project so uh, um, December 2nd 11 a.m. all the contractors were were good with that I know it's 11 o'clock in the morning guys I'm I'm, I'm sorry maybe um, you could somehow take an hour um, I, we'll, we'll we'll talk more about that but that was the that was the date that uh, was was most likely to to get everybody there and have the have the contractors in in unison. Um, we uh, um, moving on annexation had a meeting a good meeting with uh, Roy this week. Uh, we are confirming what we believe are some county increases in sanitation and in stormwater, which only makes our annexation. Uh, proposal or annexation uh, possibilities look better. So we're, we're going to plug those into the to the tax bills that we know and unless the county does something with that you know value added exemption number that seems to change regularly uh, that should uh, make annexation look a little bit um, a little bit more uh, enticing to uh, to both homeowners and businesses. Um, sidewalk improvements. <clears throat> uh, we are coordinating with the county DOT. We met with uh, Larry Ginn from uh, Clark Patterson last week uh, and we talked to Edgardo Aponte with the county uh, to see exactly what they would need to be able to utilize some of the money that they have and uh, we definitely will have to survey Skyland and Pinehurst and then have some basic plans. They'll look at that survey um, you know, we drove, we walked a little bit, we looked at drainage issues, and uh, um, so I, I, in, in talking to Edgardo, um, I feel like he is definitely going to be on board for addressing some, some drainage issues as well as just the, um, the installation of a sidewalk. So, um, and we'll try to, there obviously will be a shared cost there. So, uh, um, CPL is uh, is working on that proposal. Um, 78 and 124 landscaping. Uh, met with the, uh, talked to some district folks there. We told them about our problems that, you know, the district approves we have trouble in Atlanta. So they are working on, uh, um, on the, the proper officials in the Atlanta office. Hopefully we'll all move forward together. That's the, that's the plan. So we'll, we'll, we'll keep pushing that. Um, alcoholic beverage code, there's really nothing there. Um, ARPA funds and uses, um, you know, we're, we're still going to plug some yeah. things into the budget. Um, GMA <laughs> has provided a little more guidance, but not, uh, not a whole lot. Uh, nothing really coming from, uh, coming from Washington. Um, is your is your plan on budgeting those funds to just do it as part of our normal budget routine? Yeah, capital budget. Because yeah. I'd probably like us to sit down ahead of that mm -hmm. schedule um, oh. and and talk about ideas and, and where we are. Yeah. You'll have uh, months to do that, and uh, um, right. I'll. Um, 
every, everybody will have their input. We'll talk about where we're, where we're looking. Will the public have their input as well in this? <clears throat> um, we can put it okay. out there for public input, yeah. Mm -hmm. We could put Let's out, once we come up with our okay. proposals, yeah. yeah. Always a public process. Um, Briscoe Park Master Plan Update, we have a meeting Monday um, at, uh, with Goodwin Mills and Kaywood uh, basically to review the final report. Uh, they'll be putting that together, getting that to you in November, probably a, um, as I say, a tentative December <laughs> public presentation and, and adoption. You'll have a chance to review that uh, probably in a couple weeks. Tax billing. Um, no big issues there, which is, of course, good news. Um, you know, we're, uh, um, I think we're getting the hang of it a little bit. We have had uh, uh, a few questions to answer, but uh, overall, I think that process has gone, gone very well. So we still, there's still over a, over a month out there for, for people to, to make their payment. Um, quality of life issues. Uh, we are working with the county on uh, community cleanups, looking at, uh, at their permitting with DNR, looking at our permitting for our facility to see uh, um, if, it, if they're more likely to be able to place a, um, a debris dumpster at their Lawrenceville facility. We're, uh, um, we're just trying to see what, what, what's best for everybody there. But we want a uh, um, uh, we want to work with people. Um, we just have to make sure um, our our permitting is is taken care of. So yeah, because we're on that already have gotten pushback about having to drive to the Snellville Recycling Center to drop stuff off. So I'm pretty sure really? that Lawrenceville will not be a solution. Okay. But the big thing is for people in the greater South Gwinnett community to have somewhere to drop off their trash so they don't dump it on the side of the road or behind Best Buy or Big Lots or Dollar Store. Or well, everybody in the county has access to trash. I, I totally understand that. Yeah. I totally understand that. I mean, it's not going to stop that because everybody has garbage. <clears throat> well, but... It's not trash so much. It's, it's tires and well, dumping I, of stuff that you can't put in your trash. It <clears throat> seems to be the issue. So just just trying to facilitate. So you're, you're worried more about collection than you are anything. You want a collection plan and where we can well, bring it to. the collection plan that has been in place doesn't work. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. I mean, so essentially the, the, solution that the collection plan for stuff like that is to take it to the dump and no one's doing that now right. because they have to pay to dispose of it. Right. And then the county and also the city end up double paying for that because someone goes and dumps it on the side of the road and the right of way behind businesses and we end up having to pick it up so we're already spending the money it would be less expensive to give those people who are illegal dumping somewhere to put it so we're not having to deal with it twice i'd rather bring them in compliance give them an easy solution and a lot of the problem isn't isn't necessarily in the city. I was just looking at a way to facilitate getting the county some way to address the problem quickly. So, so what we need is a free dump. Well, you're you or know, a roll off. There, there are there are very strict well, regulations. You, you, about, I mean, you don't build if, dumps anymore. If, if, right. if you put a if you put a or a transfer station, we could call it. Yeah. We could just change the word and make it sound better. <laughs> <laughs> it's what yeah. it is. The transfer station's a dump. But well, the recycling center is a transfer station partially. Yeah. Right, but but the thing is, I mean, if you put a roll off somewhere for people to come and dispose of those things that they were going to put on the side of the road, then everybody's going to do it in lieu of going to the transfer station in Logan Lawrenceville because and this one they don't have to pay for it. I get your point, but we're essentially then providing free garbage disposal. Well, I for, want the I want the county to pay for it. Well, actually. then the county is <laughs> yeah, I mean, too. It's really more of a county issue. But the reason I say collection, Todd, I thought the, we were, these groups were collecting the garbage and putting it out. They don't want to haul it 
to a transfer station or the recycling center, they want us to collect it wherever they bag it up, wherever well, they pile it up. Which is Basically, supposedly depending, what clean depending and on, does. on who who's picking it up, they're already putting it in their truck, but then they stack it on the side of the curb. So I was hoping they could just drive over to the recycling center um, and dump it in the dumpster instead. But surprisingly, I got pushback from them. They don't want to haul the trash. That's someone else's job. And I'm well, right now, when they pile it up, Clean and Beautiful supposedly comes by and picks it up. So Eventually, yeah. Maybe yeah. we need to work with Clean and Beautiful to get them more on the ball. Could be. I'm just trying to look for a way that makes it. Well, the county definitely wants Clean and Beautiful to be involved. That's for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. And uh, uh, But uh, any new collection sites or anything like that, you know, DNR will have to be involved. You'll have to go through the permitting process. But we're working with the county on it, trying okay. to come to a, a, a reasonable plan. Um, let's see. We do have a couple of... Uh, Back up to the town center. We do no Larry Kaiser call this week. We do have two OAC meetings, owners, architects, and contractors. 2.30 with uh, Winter at their trailer. And then this will be the first one with Reeves Young at 3.30, uh, the library contractor, and which will day? be on the other side of the site on where their trailer is on Oak Road. What days are those? Uh, that's, uh, both of those are on Thursday, 2.30 and 3.30 back to back um, and I've got a uh, uh, yeah, we have a we have a veterans, 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 veterans day ceremony at three at three, at three. Okay. well these aren't a required oh, no. Yeah. no these are just available um, and that's at the winner's trailer we have uh, uh, we think we've been very successful in filling our uh, our planner commission planner position in the uh, planning and development department Josh have Stand up. Josh Ferguson is our new planner. Uh, doing a great job. He brings a wealth of experience. I think uh, uh, Jason and John and the ladies are, are very happy. Yeah, maybe yeah. past the week. Well, that's, I, I just met him tonight, yeah. and I was like, we're excited that you're still here. And he was like, why? <laughs> What's the issue that I don't know about? And I've worked with him in, my, in his previous job, and he does a great job. So that's great. Well, it's uh, um, we're we're glad to have you, Josh. Thank you. And that's all I have. Okay. Anything else for Butch? We're uh -oh. good. We're set for Saturday, right? Oh yeah. Okay. Yep. If the uh, uh, I'll meet if you here, and we'll uh, somebody will we'll remind me. I can give you my hard hat that's in the yeah. Tent. If anybody could bring their their hard hat by City Hall, we'll give them back to you. But we just we we might oh. need twenty or so. We've got about twelve, I think. We got about twelve or thirteen. So I've got, I've got three yes. or four in my shed. We're going to take you commission around for a tour of town center construction as okay. yeah. part of our. Re remind me and I'll bring it. Up. You'll have to remind me because I will not remember oh, okay. when I have that. Um, and just, just so everybody knows, I sent the conditions as we discussed out via email to everybody, to planning, to the applicant, to the attorneys and counsel. So, and hopefully Melissa has a copy of it. Um, Chuck needed to go back on something. On my report, I meant to mention that we have with us Lisa Marie Bristol, so sitting back here waving. She is a candidate for Solicitor General, and I would just encourage you all, if you have an opportunity to speak to her or to check out her page. I've known her for a long time, and uh, she really knows her stuff. So, And she's going to stay to do public comment tonight. So. How Thank many you, star general? <laughs> no. <laughs> all right, item B, Todd, uh, discussion about future land use map amendment for the Quaker Marketplace property. Um, I, I think oh. it's Jason who's going to lead that discussion. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, I believe John's going to start a conversation with Todd about already? an ongoing there conversation is. we've had uh, in regards to the old Kroger site, which obviously isn't being built. We've had some uh, probably 10 to 15 developers in the last couple months coming uh, and asking what they can do there. and. 
for whatever reason, we didn't include that in that activity node that we have right across the street, but it seems to be a strong candidate uh, for some kind of mixed use, commercial, residential type development where it's not just, uh, I don't think we want strictly just retail there. And there's a small piece in the back end that was not sold uh, with the first property that was cut off of Kroger that's kind of just a odd flag lot that they keep trying to build stuff on that just doesn't work so probably better include that include the whole thing and then get a better uh, give some developers some better options than just uh, all we're really getting right now is just like a garden style park and stuff that's not really any desirable to us as a city but the other um, <coughs> land use allows for a lot of different creativity and density based on how much mix you have so <coughs> the site's big enough that it could be implemented that way out besides the, the storm water i mean the uh, creek buffer that it has so just take a look at the packet and it's pretty explained in there pretty well and then uh, let it know if that's something you guys want to uh, move forward with and it's already on the other side of the road there it's just not on that side of the road so we just need to read through this and email you or call you. Yeah, just let us know if that's anything. something you guys are okay with. I think we'll get, I don't think we'll ever have a super coder there in the few years future, so I might as well let that And then good. what would this entail? Just a vote of yeah, council to change to come, the land use? Yeah, we'd plan. have to come to yeah. mayor, or just like uh, the, the planning commission and mayor council just to amend that land. Who owns the property now? Uh, Kroger. Kroger does. Mm -hmm. They've been sitting on it for five plus years. Wow. Are they actively trying to sell it? Or? They are now. You can tell. I think they've held it long enough, and uh, you know, but you know, it's always storage and apartments that call first. Uh, you know, so I'm give them some better options. Maybe somebody can put something together there. Plenty of land to do something. And fix that intersection. So, when you talk about the flag piece of property, you're talking about the sin cone that goes back behind the Kroger development? Yeah, it's right okay. next to Action Awards there. Yeah. A little piece. That was a piece yeah. that the original owners mm -hmm. kept in hopes of development. They've been trying to turn in like 70 pound homes there. It just, it's not so easy. It needs to be developed all at one piece. So you can get it. And there's some topography challenges yeah. over there, rock, water, there's a bunch of stuff going on over there. But if we don't hear anything bad, I'll just assume that everybody goes down and work anything bad. And then we have last item that Tourism and Trade Board nominations. Um, the council gets two board appointments. And if you looked in the packet, you'll see we actually, normally stat gives us two applications. And we typically just accept those because they've been vetted by stat. Um, they gave us three applications for two positions. Um, so just needed to check with everybody and see how you want to go about choosing two of the three. Actually, it's, it's Stephanie and Deborah are up for one position, one post, and um, Jared is up for Jared renewal. Jared is up for, a, yeah, his post he's held before. Got it. So it's really just a matter of choosing Deborah or Stephanie. They, we actually had more applicants this year, so you need to make a choice. Okay. Um, both are worthy candidates for sure. Um, so I don't I don't know that we need to decide tonight, but we'll need to put this on our next meeting agenda because you need it by January. End really. of the year. Yeah. Yes, would be <clears throat> nice. Okay. Okay, and then exec session or no? No. Okay. All right then. Um, can can we address 
whether, whether we need a meeting on the, uh, the on second the meeting, because I'm going to be out of town. I will as well. November 22nd. 22nd. Yeah. yeah. I um, mean, if there's pressing, you know, we have to do a joint development agreement for the parking deck or something like that, by all means, change, change plans. <laughs> but cool. if we're having a meeting to have a meeting. get around and say, hey, we're doing a great job, I'm, I'd rather take a little time off and go out of town. Would you think, uh, would there be a possibility of that next Monday, maybe for a called meeting, a quick called meeting? Uh, yes. Sure. Be, yes. Would be preferable? Because well, I know Gretchen's going to be coming back into town on the 22nd. On the 22nd. You could have all kinds of issues there. Let's hope not. What time? Yeah. The 29th you're talking about now? Yeah. The, yeah. A called meeting? Yeah, yeah. potentially. That, that we schools, need that. Yeah, schools are out that week, uh, the 22nd through. Okay. Thanksgiving. That's fine. Oh well, there, uh, maybe I'll several move my vacation. Are, yeah, several people are planning. Okay. So yeah, right. good deal. I appreciate the input there. So because right now we don't have anything for the. So it is. There's not a not a zoning matter. We'll. So we'll go ahead and post a cancellation for the meeting on the twenty second. Right. And then we'll. Determine whether we need to do a call meeting on the 29th. Back in school on the 29th, so. Okay. All right, anything else for the good of the group? Then I'll take a motion to adjourn the person. There's a motion, is there a second? Second. All in favor? Okay. Time is 716. We need to change.